another one. I feel like DJ Khaled now at these satin paint jobs. We're really starting to see a lot more of these in the collision shops and BMW has a lot of satin colors in their lineup. So we are a certified shop. So I'm starting to see a lot of these in the shop and we're starting to get really familiar with them. So this is definitely a pretty blue and I like it in the satin. This one to me looks a lot better than that last darker one we did on the Alpina. But this one here had some damage along the quarter panel, right around the wheel well. And then it hit the bumper, the rocker, and some of the cladding on this one. I'll go ahead and show you guys that now. When it came in before the body man got a hold of it and sanded it down and stripped it, we really didn't have to do any filler in it, but we did do some sanding and uh, prepping out of the panels. So on this one here, you guys see we removed the glass. That way we could have a nice clean job. We removed the molding up on the top. This is a carbon roof. So we're not gonna have to worry about that. And especially being that there's a breaking point in this one. So we're gonna be handling the quarter panel on this one, as well as the rear bumper and the rocker panel. And there is some shiny black pieces that go to this car, but we're not gonna worry about them in this here video. We're just gonna handle the satin. I don't like to have shiny parts in there with the satin clear, because sometimes you could overspray either way whether it's shiny or satin. So just focus on the satin and then we're gonna put the other shiny parts in in another load later on. So we're not gonna focus on that in this video, but we're gonna handle the satin. So when you're doing a job, you wanna analyze that job and treat each job differently. You wanna prep in the same and have your routine that you do, but you wanna evaluate a job just like a doctor would. When he goes in and he evaluates the patient he sees what is the best outcome for that patient. They just don't handle each job exactly the same way. So that's the way that I do it as well when I'm looking at this job. So we do have limited area here. You guys see the damages around the wheelhouse. So when I'm doing this one, I'm not gonna seal this job. All the parts were repaired, so I don't have to worry about adhesion to the E-coat. So we could rely on the mechanical scratch and we're gonna prep this one out with a 600 grit, very fine, do our areas in the 800 with our blends. That way we can move straight into the base and keep the color nice and smooth and not have to worry about getting it too far on this blend panel. Because with the satin clears, you gotta have everything as slick as you can. And I don't wanna have any halos with the uh, sealer that I'm gonna have to play with and scuff down. So in this job, we're not gonna seal it. We're gonna prep it out fine. And then we're gonna move right into our wet bed base coat and clear. So let's go ahead and get these things prepped out. I'll show you guys the parts on what we have to do to the bumper and the rocker. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and clean the panel off. We're gonna be using a prep saw on this one. You guys see we covered up the hole because the window is out. Go ahead, get your panel cleaned off the best you can because these do have sometimes ceramic on them. They do ceramic coat some of the uh, satin finishes as well. And I think some of the waxes are even designed for some of these satin paint jobs to protect them. So go ahead and make sure you clean it. Don't think because it's satin that it's not gonna have any wax on it. Go ahead, get it cleaned off really good with this first and then we'll get into the waterborne cleaner and we'll do the same procedures I normally do when I'm prepping them out. You guys know I like to clean them and scuff them at the same time with the waterborne because that's gonna really get off any of the organic stuff and I like to clean and scuff it. That way I'm doing two things at the same time and I can go around all my edges at that point. So go ahead and get it cleaned off and then we'll go ahead and move into the waterborne cleaner and get it scuffed up. All right, so this is waterborne in a pump sprayer from PPG. This is their waterborne treatment and this does have some type of alcohol in it as well as some of their waterborne cleaner. So what I do is I go ahead, scuff it. We're using a gray on this one and we're just gonna go around, scuff it up good, clean it and uh, look at it well. This is when I like to check over the job to see where I'm gonna take my tape lines into onto the seam sealer and just evaluate how I'm gonna handle the job. So go ahead, get it scuffed up, get it clean. And then we're moving to the procedures of the prep work. All right, so we're gonna go ahead now and block down the primer. And we're gonna be blocking this one with the Fest tool with 600 grit. That way it's fine enough of a scratch to move right into the base coat. So 
This one here, like I said, didn't really have a lot of body work done. There was really no filler applied, so we're just dealing with scratches and then some uh, primer. So let's go ahead and get it blocked down. All right, so on that there, I'm not gonna use the block on the round arch of the wheelhouse. That is just overspray mist. And this area here we blocked because that's where the actual repair was with the scratches. So instead of going ahead and blocking this now with a hard block and maybe putting lines, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my DA with the hook it on it and hit that nicely right here with the 600, refine over that blocking, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit this with the 800. All right, so we've got our primer handled. Now we're gonna go ahead and address the blend areas with our 800. You guys see here, we tape this off. Normally I don't tape these off, but being this is a satin paint job, you're not gonna be able to buff them up if you do happen to hit that with the sander. So make sure you take precaution when you're doing these satin jobs because there's no polishing up edges if you were to actually nick this a little bit like we do sometimes in the industry, and then we'll buff it up once we get the job all finished. You can't do that, so take precaution on your adjacent panels when you're prepping them out. That way you don't have a chance of having a problem because if you do screw these up, you're gonna have to paint them. You're not gonna be able to buff them. You're not gonna be able to fix them. So cover them up just as a precaution. And now let's go ahead and hit our areas with our 800 on the DA. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and hit it with our sky pad all around the edges. And I am gonna run over the whole job with the sky pad. And I like to keep my line straight when I'm doing these, just to get a nice, even, consistent finish when you're uh, sanding over it. So hit your edges. And these are the normal steps that I would do on any of my normal jobs here in the shop on a glossy finish. Other than I refined it down a little bit just so we do not have to seal this so we can keep this smaller. And I have done this before on some videos with you guys on small areas that we're trying to keep small and you don't wanna have to seal it. So you just have to refine it. And I like using the sealer mainly when we have a repair or we have a new OEM part. That way you have the best adhesion. But it does stick well when you prep it out and you sand it good, prep fine enough to move right into your base coat so you don't have any sand scratches. So this here, we'll go ahead and finish scuffing. We'll blow it off and this will be ready for the booth. All right, so these are the two parts we're gonna be getting ready for this here vehicle. And this one here, we did the same thing. We already hit them with the prep saw, and now we're gonna go ahead and get them sanded down with the 600 on the primer, and then we're gonna do the 800. But on these parts, being that these were on the vehicle and they have a lot of dirt that gets trapped up into these BMW parts, because there's a lot of areas here where things clip into, and that means that there's areas that dirt can get trapped. So once we get them sanded down, we're gonna bring them outside and we're gonna do a thorough cleaning on them with the scuff it paste and get the inside clean as well as the outside. That way this thing is as clean as we can because you guys know with the satin, you cannot buff it. So. All right, so what we're gonna do now is bring these in here, turn the booth on, and we'll let them air out and dry while we're taping up the car.
All right, so we've got everything masked off. We've got everything ready to get cleaned up. And one thing I wanted to tell you guys as well, while you're masking up these satin jobs, take extra precaution to make sure you don't have any gaps because this is, like I said, not gonna be able to be buffed. So if you were to get overspray, you could use thinner to get it off, but if you have to sand it and buff it, you're done. So seal the job up as tight as possible. Double check all your tape. Go around it. Make sure you have no way of overspray getting on any of the panels that you're not painting. That way you don't have any trouble once you unmask the job. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this like we normally would with our wax and grease and our prep saw. And then we're gonna get into our wet bed. So the reason I'm gonna wet bed this job is for two reasons. So that I can see my blend, so that it'll lay into it nicely. But I wanna have the same foundation to where when I put the clear on, I'm gonna have the same sheen. So you don't wanna put your base and then put your clear on clear because that may have a different look. I wanna have the same even foundation. So that way we're gonna go ahead and wet bed this so that way all the area that we're gonna be clearing is gonna be the same with the wet bed underneath. So we'll have the same uniform finish. So All right, so we've got our wet bed on it, and now we're gonna move into the base coat. But you guys know that you always wanna check your color before you start painting. So we did our spray out yesterday before we got this car in the booth. That way, once we get in here, we know what we're able to do. Our color is good, but with the satins, you have to verify which one you're gonna use. They have an eggshell, they have a semi-gloss, they have a flat, and sometimes you have to make a custom mix. So if you wanna learn more about that, go back to one of my older videos that I did on painting the $170,000 Alpina, and you'll go into more on how I mixed that clear special for that job, and that's the one that we're gonna use on this one as well. So I'll show you guys that brochure later on in this video, but let's go ahead and get some base on it. All right, so this here is the brochure I was telling you guys about from PPG. This is their matte guide, and it shows you the different levels of the gloss. They have it all the way from full gloss to the semi-gloss, to the satin, to the eggshells, to some other flat ones. And uh, this comes in handy because it shows you it in the black, white, as well as metallic. So I do use this, but now that I've been doing a lot of these satin jobs, I pretty much know what I need to do and that's to spray out a card that way you can tell because each metallic or each color sometimes will have the clear looking different so if something's more metallic -y, it could actually have it suck down and die out a little bit more than something that is more of a solid color that doesn't have that many metallics in it 
So to me, your best bet is to go ahead and spray out the color that you're gonna be using and then spray out your clear. That way you know which one and how yours is gonna look because I wouldn't trust just spraying one color. To me, I wanna know exactly how that color is gonna look when it's done. So we put our two coats on, we dropped it, we put our control coat, and that means you come off the panel with a lower air pressure. That way you can even out your metallics and not have any blotches because you will see them in a satin paint job even though it's not shiny. So let's let that set up. We're gonna go in there and mix up our custom mix that I did on the Alpina on this one. And then we're gonna go ahead and clear it. But make sure when you put your clear on, let each coat flash off completely before you apply your second coat. Otherwise you're gonna have uneven looking satin clear and you're not gonna be happy with it. So we're gonna let it flash and then we're gonna go in there and put our coats on and then we'll show it to you guys all finished up. All right, so it definitely came out nice, but the real tell is gonna be once we unmask it and see how that quarter lines up to the door with the sheen. So let's get it unwrapped, pull it outside, and take a good look at it to see how it meets up with the original panels from BMW. All right, so let me know what you guys think of the job all finished up. I'm very happy with the sheen. And once this car gets fully washed, it's gonna be all beautiful again. So I hope you guys got some good tips out of the video. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you guys on the next one.